This is a, a supermarket yesterday. So these are the prices as of yesterday. Um, but right, the idea here is, you know, what is that, right? What is that? And I try to, I try to update my numbers. This, these, these numbers are old. These are many years old. But um, for some reason, the, the query wasn't working on fish base this morning. I, I'm not entirely sure why. But the, the point is, oh, the, the point um, still is solid, which is we have something like more than 4,600 um, species of fish in fish base, which is, a, which is a global database of all the fish species that we know of. There's some, some on the order of 4,600 fish species that are commercially exploited. So, so we, we take those for not just sustenance, but for someone to sell um, to, to, to make some money. Yes, globally. Sorry, correctly. Yeah, this, this is across the whole world. Of, of those species exist in multiple populations, right? In multiple stocks in the language of fisheries as we've discussed. And most of those that have multiple stocks often have different exploitation pressures, right? So maybe some are fished heavily, some are maybe fished moderately, maybe some are not fished at all, for example, depending on where we are and, and the season and this and that. And then, as, we, as you recall, fishery doesn't refer to just things with backbones in the context of fisheries management. That can also include algae, that can include lobsters, that can include mollusks, right? All, all kinds of other things. So we're talking thousands and thousands of potential species out there. So keeping track of which stocks are of these, you know, thousands and thousands of things out there, which are well managed, um, which ones are sustainably being harvested in a responsible manner, et cetera, is just quite simply beyond what most of us can, can do, right? I mean, that, that, that would be a full-time job. And indeed, we heard from Ruben and from Kyle and at uh, uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium just how they have full staff to so just you know, professionally spend their lives just working on trying to understand this, right? So this is, this is a challenge. And so obviously, we do need some kind of clear type of certification. The guides are helpful. Certifications, though, are really also probably you know, what we need ultimately. We don't have those for the world yet, but, but we need something to help us understand um, this, this, this system. And so the key aspect of this is this, well, there's several aspects, but, but probably the most important one, I would say, that, that's um, people recognize early on as one of the biggest barriers is simple traceability. So when something says it's a salmon, is it a salmon and, and where did it come from? When they say Alaskan salmon, did it really come from Alaska or did it come from elsewhere? And so the general idea, as you recall, with, with one of these uh, approaches to certification um, in the context of traceability, that would be we'd go through, let's say, the certification process, let's, let's say it's MSC, and we go through that, okay, cool. Then once that, that tissue, that, that, that animal is harvested, it would go to a primary processor, and sometimes that's all that happens, and sometimes then it goes right to us. But uh, usually it'll go to, you know, so that would be on the dock where they sort of gut it and flash freeze it, let's say. And then it goes to another processor that might do something like, let's say, bread it and, 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 and steam it or, or, or par, parboil it or whatever. Then it'll go to some distributor and wholesaler and, uh, and they will buy it and then it'll go to their warehouse, let's say, or, or distribution facilities or what have you. And only then does it get, in most cases, does it get to us? Do we get to see it at that point of sale where you guys are now surveying your markets and surveying your restaurants? And so the question is, um, let's see how this works. Let's see how this works. So, um, so the, the basic question, right, is as, as you guys are encountering, and a lot of times you guys are putting, I don't know, because you're asked the waiter, wait staff, and they say, I don't know, it's some kind of fish. You're like, okay, well, where is it from? I don't know, the sea, right, or, or North America or something. You know, so, so we're trying to get as much info as we can, but as you guys are finding, oftentimes that's, that's we run into a blank wall, right? Okay, so here's the, here are the racks on a local supermarket yesterday afternoon. And, uh, and check it out. There, there's, uh, there's, uh, I see some MSC seals up there, right? And so let's take a look at this one individual package that I, I bought yesterday, which is right here. So this is this uh, bumblebee wild-caught salmon. 
Um, so the front of it has the, the trademark logo, the, the Marine Stewardship Council logo. So clearly uh, this fishery has paid to be audited. It's gone through the auditing process. It's, it's been deemed that it's well, well managed, well, well uh, regulated, et cetera. Okay, cool, so we got that. Now we wanna know, hey, so, so what's going on? So we flip, on the flip to the back in this case, and it has some stuff. So obviously first it has that, that MSC logo that tells us that this is, um, you can have confidence that this is a well-regulated fishery. But with traceability, we should always be able to double check, right? We're not, we're not calling these people jerks. We just want to, hey, if it's really sustainable, let's, let, let me see. So if we look at the others, if we look on the backside, um, we see a couple things. So one, we have a, a, a digitally printed, a digitally printed uh, tag, which is unique for, for that lot, right? Um, and that's going to change with every lot of fish or every, every day of production or however it works. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have a, a best, best if used by date. Um, and then it's going to have the ingredients list. And on the ingredients list, it's going to have what species it is. Um, almost always in the common name, which is a little problematic, but it's what we got. Um, and it should say where it comes from, right? So in this case, it says, hey, this is an MSC certified sustainable fishery. So we have this number we can try looking up. And we have this number right here we can try looking up. And elsewhere uh, on, this lab on this label, it says... Uh, 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 here, check, go to our website, Trace My Catch, which is a bumblebee, uh, uh, which is this, this brand of tuna's um, uh, uh, website that they've, they've established. That's what I want you guys to do. So jump on your computer right now and see if you can tell me where this stuff comes from. So, so you have two options, right? We have the Trace My Catch and then we have the, the MSC um, certification uh, uh, directory. And we have two numbers we can play with. We have this MSC C55658 and this L171RS2PB1. So everybody uh, uh, take a whack at um, uh, one or both of those, actually both of those, and see if you can tell me um, about the traceability of this, this seafood. Okay, so Allie found it. Anybody else, did anybody else find it yet? Okay, so two folks found it so far. Okay, so people are taking a shot at the different combinations. So look, raise your hand if you, if you have some data on what this fish was. Only six of you guys. Okay, cool. So folks have found, folks have found uh, information about it. What, what, which, which did you use? Trace my catch? Uh, use the MSC certification directory? And which ones you use? You use the L171 or the MSC? Yeah, so the MSC seemed to have worked on this one. And, and I don't want to cut us off. Did anybody find anything different than that? Okay. Right, so, the, so this is actually, so this MSC is the, is the production, is, is the, the infrastructure certification, right? Saying that these folks are following the rules and, and they're all legit and all that kind of good stuff, which is an important thing. But it's not the individual lot of the fish, right? So that, that number from this producer that's doing seafood is going to be the same no matter where they get the, the, the items from, right? I mean, I shouldn't say where they get because, because when they, they agree to get them from a certain area, but still, you guys get the point. Okay, so interesting. So would you call that traceable? Yeah, yeah I don't think I would. I don't think I would. Uh, I don't think so. So, in other words, this seafood item itself, this one individual packet of, like the the the, the tissue that comes in here. I, I don't know if I don't know if I would call that uh, super robustly traced. So let's try um, let's try a few others. Oh, sorry. So, and where was it from? Where was it from? Yeah. So it was a processor oh, in Thailand. A lot of salmon okay. in Thailand. Just just FYI. Okay. So, um, which, which is, is, again, as we mentioned, we talked about this in the context of um, uh, the squid fishery, how, you know, by biomass, our largest fishery here in California, and we essentially process none of that seafood. That, that all that tissue goes overseas to China, is processed over there, then comes back to us for our markets. So this, this notion of, of where is it processed is a challenge, challenge economically, it's a challenge in terms of carbon emissions, 
but it's also a challenge in terms of um, you know, just viable livelihoods for the folks in, the, in our fishing dependent communities here and, and everywhere around the world, right? If you have to always send your stuff elsewhere. So for example, my friends in, um, in Louisiana up until very, re one of the things you can go in, the, in any sort of tourist place, you can buy pecan oil, right? Really cool, really f high, you know, high quality, fine oil, great for cooking and all that kind of stuff. Up until a couple years ago, there were no processors left in Louisiana. So Louisiana took all of its pecans and sent them to California to be pressed because we have a lot of olive production, olive oil and stuff. So they would get their stuff pressed and then it would come back to Louisiana, which seems kind of crazy, right? That could be jobs for local Louisiana folks and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, all right, great. You guys get the idea. And the last little bit, moving stuff around adds to the challenge of traceability. If things came from the Channel Islands and were processed in Santa Barbara, Ventura, and then sold to us, it's a much shorter chain. It's much easier to, to track that down and, and know. And, and those folks selling it to you would have a much higher confidence what was there, right? It's not surprising when you go into some of these restaurants and say, where's it from? Like, oh no, because that item might have gone across the world potentially a few times just to be prepared for, you know, that, that, that sales thing that you guys encountered. Okay, so uh, next, uh, there's lots of stuff there, right? All these things have, yeah, Brandon. Good question, so when I was doing the um, grocery store thing. You can say harvested in country X, processed in country Y, but you only have to say the last stage that it came from. So, um, so it's, it's, it's imperfect, right? It, it's imperfect, if it was really just catch it, throw it on the plane, ship it here, it'd be very, it would be pretty straightforward. Um, so that's why, you know, the restaurant's a restaurant, but that's why in the markets, that's why I said, you know, if, if look, on the, look on the label and if it says processed in whatever or distributed by wherever, write that down, right? So let's try, let's try a couple more examples. I bought a few other things that are all supposedly third party certified. So um, a couple people came in since I first counted, so I'll probably be off. But so pair up with somebody next to you. So we'll do this in teams of two, and let's just try this again with, with the different with different stuff. Yeah. So so as much as much specificity as you guys can get, give it to me. So so if they say king salmon, put king salmon. If they say San Diego, California, put San Diego, California. So as much specificity as we can squeeze out of this. 